They'll be like those poor people in Ohio, Ohio right now. guys welcome back to square county homestead glad you made it back here with us today we're going to show you how we do a uh, fully automatic chicken water but this one for us is going to supply three different coops on one supply so i'm going to have a link in the description of all the materials all the tools you'll need and i may even hide a different link in there for something special so Keep watching. Let's show you how easy this water system is. Okay. So, all right. So we're out here in the barn. It's just way too windy to do this outside. But we are going to have our chickens are right here. So try to get through this material list. And I'm going to put a link in or put a description of every piece that we use for this whole entire project. But just to start off, we got a food grade bucket. We got a lid we got a toilet valve a toilet line so that goes to three eighths which will go to this what we call a stop it's a three eighths to half female i need two of these pvc males you see there's one there's one all right i know i, I need a 90 or two here's a union half inch unions i'm going to need three or four of those uh just a half inch coupling half inch pipe this is thread tape cleaner and glue that's actually primer but you can use the same thing uh pipe cutters now we got two half inch valves let's let's go ahead and get to this uh I don't know. I may use these. These are the nipples that hang straight down. These are the cups. And here's the T. It's a half inch by roughly a three eighths opening. But that'll screw into it. That'll screw into it. You can go to Amazon and they're all over the place. All right. Half inch. This is conduit nuts. In the electrical section, you'll find that. Now I'm going to need tape measure, a level, a drill. Let me make sure we get that again. Put Mr. Rooster there. A level, a drill, a three-quarter bit, and a seven-eighths bit, and some 100% silicone. So, like I said, I'll I'll put. My goodness, I'll put all these parts in, in the description description for you so let's get started okay this is my first step the way i like to do it take this union it comes apart make sure it's got this rubber seal this rubber o-ring so that one does we're in good shape now this isn't for pressure we're not holding we're just holding head pressure there's always a lot of experts say i overdo things and there's a reason why I don't want to, have to do it twice. So we're going to clean it or primer. Now, this little piece of pipe is only, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches long. We're going to put one of our half inch females on one end and half of this union on the other. Thing with this half inch male. We're gonna get it glued on there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stick this back together just so I don't lose this part.
All right, you got those ends glued. I'm gonna just cut this in half. And you could have just made two six inch pieces, done the same thing. Actually, it's not gonna be exactly in half. Clean and glue our little valve on. Gluing on the valve. I mainly put it on the pipe. And I try to do it where it, this glue won't seep down, if you can. And while you got that, let's hold it. Let's turn that valve. Let's keep turning. Because we don't want that glue to get in on this ball and it'll glue it in an open or shut position. So we're gonna do this for about 30 seconds or so. Okay, so we're, we're done with the gluing process for right now. Stick that off to the side. Now, <clears throat> this is when I wanna figure out where I wanna put this. This is our field valve. So our inlet, our water line is gonna come into here and this float floats up and it stops. It, it'll uh, prevent the water from keep going. So I always just take this and you always got this inventions and writing and all this in here. I try to stay away from that. So I know I can put that right there and I'm looking and I turn it upside down but I want to make sure I can put it inside and you don't want to be too far over. If you put it right on the edge, this won't fit in there. So I already know right up in here should be fine. For this piece, I just go across the way from it and I know in there it'll be fine. So here's our three quarter. We're gonna go ahead and drill that right up in here. That needs to be just a little bit bigger than three quarter. It's hard, but it will go down in there. It's gonna be okay. I'm going to change bits. Basically, that's going to go on the inside, just like that. So now, this is when we're going to get that half-inch conduit nut and have our silicone ready. Now, we're probably going to make a mess. Just get ready. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. And get it almost to the pot where it's flush. There's a nut. This nut's gonna go on the inside of your bucket. So now I'm gonna take this silicone and I'm gonna make a bead all the way up under there. And now I'm just gonna kind of thread it on down in there. Keep in mind, you need to know the direction on how you want your valve set up in this. Now, we're gonna go in there. Let's run a bead on the inside. Go all the way around those threads. Now, I'm gonna show you the inside of this bucket in just a second. Take that nut, we're gonna get it screwed on. Okay, so I got my nut on. I'm going to take that. You see, my fingers are full of silicone. And I'm going to silicone everything except the opening of that pipe. Since my fingers are already got silicone, I'm going to spread this silicone out. I want to make sure it covers that fitting at the bottom and it comes out flush with the bottom of the bucket. Okay, your fill valve comes with this nut and it comes with this red washer. That, that red washer is going to go on the inside of your bucket and you're just going to tighten the fold out of this plastic nut. No silicone is required on this. Well, let me go ahead and give you a, a shot of the inside. So that's kind of what we're looking at right there. So I'm going to leave this here for the day. I want this silicone to dry. Uh, 
that's the main issue but it is so windy outside i can't do anything outside with the video today anyway so we'll come back tomorrow we're just gonna let this set up all right the so next day silicone's all hardened up everything's good i did lie to you i need just a couple more little holes and where i'm gonna put this this is like a 3 8 bit you can use whatever you could probably use one that you already have you can use a screw whatever you want to use but we're gonna put a i'm gonna put probably three or four holes just in this lip here that's just gonna vent it's just vent holes that's gonna make sure we don't have any vapor lock issues that the, that's gonna allow the water to flow out because this here is gonna have a sealed top on it all right so our next step we're just gonna go ahead and hook up everything for the inlet well it's out here now in the open and you're not trying to do it while it's on that stand go ahead and take that nut off of this three eighths by half inch valve I'm gonna put Teflon on this half inch mill. It's gonna screw screw into this half inch by three eighths valve. Your commode line <clears throat> is gonna go straight on. And I'm just showing you a short version of it. And then that's just gonna go to here. Now, another tool I may have forgot to mention, a little pair of channel locks, maybe a crescent wrench. Uh, this, you can pretty much screw down by hand. This up here, I usually try to get pretty tight, and then we do want to tighten this half-inch mail here. It's just a little box stand I built <laughs> to hold it up there. Basically, the outside diameter, nine and a half by might as well say 11 and a quarter i just actually set my bucket up there and made it work for that bucket's going to sit on all pieces of wood this is of course open that way your pipes <laughs> your pipes run down through the middle okay so there's my inlet valve that's underground coming up I got it glued. Glue it any which way you can to get to your inlet on your bucket. So give it a little bit of time, at least 30 minutes. And if you don't have a main supply coming in like we do, uh, they do make a connector that would go from PVC to a water hose connector. You could just run your hose out here. Just cut this on so I've got water up to here. No leaks here. I'm going to cut this one on. This valve is off. All right, we're filling up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to check and make sure this shuts off when it should. And I'm going to make sure there's no leaks underneath. Okay, this fill valve worked. It just shut, shut down. Now, I'm not going to hold this water in there. That was just for these test purposes. And I'm making sure there's no leaks. Get that finger out of there. Now, I want to flush this out. I don't want these chemicals from this pipe cleaner and glue to be in this water for our chickens. Or they'll be like those poor people in Ohio, Ohio right now with all their water issues. So let's dump it out. Now, I'm gonna start off, but I gotta, I need to think about how many nipples do I want in each section. And I've got three sections, three sections. I've only got five in this one. I've got five, six chickens in that one. I think I got 10 in this far one over here. So we may go with three in each that way. I mean, you can always go back and add in if you wanted to. So I think that's what we're gonna do. This is the critical part here. Uh, I'm gonna use three nipples per coop, but I want these to be lined up. So basically, and I'm not gonna show you the gluing and the cleaning and gluing process, we've already done that. 
you know how to do that. So we're gonna pretend this is clean. We got this glue. We want to match this with this. So you need a flat surface. And basically, we're gonna put it in there. Now remember, if this is glue, you don't have a whole lot of time. And we're just gonna make sure that everybody is flat. And everybody's lined up. So you're just going to put the small end on the on your flat surface and make sure it's all lined up. And you'll let that dry. Okay, so we're inside the coop now. And you see that comes from our outlet. There's our bucket. Comes from the outlet with a union. I teed this off with another union right inside the coop. And I'm going to show you why this is important. The reason why I teed, you never know what I may need in the future. I just put a piece in the cap. You don't have to do that, but that's the way I like to do it. So I'm going to cut this and put our nipples on here. Now I like to put these unions right here where I'm working by my nipple system. And I'll do this at every coop I have running down through here. And I want it close by for this reason. I want to make sure these are, the way I want them is pointed straight down. And they need to be plumbed. It'd be the same thing if you wanted them straight out. By loosening this up, loosen that up, and this pipe will roll, okay? So if I want them straight out like that, you put your level on there, get them level. So here's the exact same system. So this is inside our big coop, or main coop. You see, we use the cups here. That's not the application I want. I want it to roll straight down. We put a level on there, get it level. Now you can tighten this down, but you want to do it without moving this because you've already got this level. Now the pipe don't have to be level, like this pipe here, it don't have to be level. We're going to try to get it level, but it, it can go up and down as long as it don't go above that bucket, you'll have water to it. Alright, so everything's level. Now I'm using these little nipples here. I'm going to put a little Teflon tape on the threads. Okay, and that's all hand tight right there. And it, it pretty much went all the way up. Okay, so now you're at the end of your run. And this is where our last half inch valve comes into play. And we use this for a different couple of reasons. Uh, for one, the main one, I can flush this line out, okay? So that's how we flush it out. I've already flushed this line out several times before we let the chickens out out here to start drinking. But also this can be used in, in a future. If I want to build another coop out here, I already have it out here. So that's a big plus being able to flush this line. And you see they, they've immediately actually learned to use this system. Things are going to work pretty well. All right, guys, hope this little video helped somebody. It looked complicated at first, I'm sure. But as you can tell, it ain't nothing to it. And uh, any other boys, criticisms, comments, put in the comment section, let's talk about it. As always, we appreciate you watching.